afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for some Premier Ultimate League action. I'm Harrison Silcox. Charlie Lowe alongside me today uh, for a trio of games here today in the Premier Ultimate League. We're starting with the Indy Red and the Columbus Pride. And, uh, Charlie, this should be a fun one today. Our broadcast is brought to you by Parker Mortgage Team. That rate you found on the Internet is no better than a dead disc, and it's really only part of your mortgage equation. You need to go to Mortgage Advisor to walk through the process and paint the whole picture. Check out the Parker Mortgage Team in downtown Noblesville, where basically your Vincent Van Gogh to. And then also Zen Lab. Did you know that Indianapolis Red has a personal yoga teacher? Yes, Kristen, the founder of Zen Lab, and you can work with her too. Zen Lab has a dynamic selection of yoga styles and classes all available online. Go to Zen Lab indy.com to learn more again i'm harrison silcox charlie Lowe with me today and uh, charlie the red come into this one two and oh uh, the wind was a big story last week you were down there on the field before this game got started you got a chance to talk with with coaches and players on each teams uh, before we dive into what their strategies might look like today as as far as those wind conditions, uh, is, is it anything like what we saw last weekend um, where, you know, I understand there was some pretty severe upwind that teams are dealing with? Harrison, I would love to make a joke for you about it, but straight <laughs> up and down, it's just not. Today, the wind that we're going to be seeing, uh, the players are going to refer to that as a crosswind. That means that as they're looking at the length of the field, the wind is coming across one side of their bodies. In this case, um, it's going to be... The side that, if you're looking on our stream, it's going to be coming from that where you see that school building down towards the cameras. That's going to really impact the way that the players um, adjust their downfield shots. Not only that, it's going to affect the way that they are swinging the disc back and forth to each other. Last week, though, a veritable wall of wind that <laughs> players were attempting to throw into uh, or when they were looking for those downfield shots really trying to make sure that they calibrated appropriately as they, you know, knew the wind was going to push their disc and push it far. And and that game last week was a win for Indy Red, 14-13 to over Minnesota. Uh, they've beaten Nashville and Minnesota on their way to a 2-0 and start to the season uh, for the Pride. They're 0-2 with losses to Milwaukee and 1-2. Minnesota. Uh, both these teams playing in two games today. New York is also here um, as we've got three teams out here in what should be a fun day of ultimate. I understand you got to talk with Indy Red a little bit about their strategies. We go back to that crosswind that you're talking about this. You look at the camera that you can see in the broadcast here. That wind is coming towards that camera. So if you can imagine throwing a Frisbee into that, if you've ever thrown a Frisbee before, you know that's going to be a bit challenging. Um, so how is Indy Red going to handle this? What's their strategy going to be today? Offensively, the Red uh, believes firmly in the systems that they run and in the talent that they're putting out on the field. Um, they've got the throwers to navigate that wind on offense. They're a lot less concerned there. Defensively, they're going to see the same 3-3-1 zone that we saw from them last week. What that means is that they're going to run a three-person cup or wall right around the disc. They're going to run a three-person wall probably about 10 yards up the field and then one person sitting in the deep space taking care of anything, you know, any looks that may come their way. Last week, as I said, we saw more of a three-person wall right up against the disc. This time, we're going to see a cup. They're going to try to trap down on that low side, again, the close side to the camera, and um, really make it difficult for the opposing teams to uh, swing the disc and utilize the full field space. The more that the red can trap it down here on this close sideline, the more success they're going to have. Yeah, when you talk about swinging the disc, it, it's it's moving that Frisbee um, you know, horizontally across the field and just trying to make it difficult. And, and it sounds like you don't, you just want to trap them to that near sideline and, and force some, some uncomfortable throws. Yeah, it's all about dictating what the other team gets, the looks that they're working with, the throws that are available to them, the receivers, the receiver options that they have. A zone is a much, you know, is an arguably more effective way of making that dictation for the other team. Strong person defense will find you a lot of success, but a good zone, taking away those spaces and making sure that, you know, even without as much effort, almost the entirety of the field space is occupied by an attacking defender. That's huge. And for the Columbus Pride, how are they going into this game from from a strategy perspective? How are they going to try to, you know, handle their team and what the Indy Red might throw at them? The Pride... I got a chance to talk to um, veteran player Domenica Sutherland as well as their captain, Ben Murphy. And it's, you know, honestly a tremendously in, uh, exciting piece of team unity I got from them. Across the board, 
the Pride are worried about playing their game. Mm -hmm. They recognize the position that they're in, you know, kind of looking into the greater playoff picture. But the one thing they know they can control is how they come into each game and how they play. They're going to come out. They're going to work it downfield to their very young, very athletic cutters. They're going to trust that their, um, you know, highly experienced, very veteran handlers are going to move the disc tremendously effectively. You know, they've got people who can throw regardless of the conditions and regardless of the conditions they're, of the, the players that they're going to see in those matchups. So they're not necessarily worried about the systems they're going to see from the red. They're going to come in and play their offense, and it's one that likes to shoot and shoot often. You talk about the importance of this game. Pride are zero and two coming into this one, red two and zero. There are some some playoff implications here as the season moves along. Absolutely, the Pride are in a situation where they may be looking at needing to win out the rest of their season. That's going to start with a win against the Indy Red today, uh, followed by a, a win against the Gridlock in their following game. The Red much more in control of their own destiny. They're two and zero against a strong, you know, kind of resurgent Nashville team. Um, and they've, you know, beat a Minnesota strike team that went into Columbus and beat the pride, you know, just a week ago. Um, they know though, not to rest on their laurels. They're going to come out uh, with intensity. I think that we've probably not seen yet this season. Um, this is pretty favorable weather conditions comparatively to what they played <laughs> in. You're going to hear it a lot today, folks get pretty comfortable with that. Um, but you know, that just means that, they have even more weapons at their disposal. Um, they're going to come in and attempt to really cement themselves as a front runner in the league. And so with both of these teams, they're playing two games. So uh, the Indy Red, they are hosting New York and also Columbus. So they're going to get a break after this game. They'll play later today uh, in a 6 o'clock start against New York, Columbus. After this game, they'll be playing against New York, and then New York plays Red later. So, I mean, how do you think that – the players handle that when, when you play in these games. You know, obviously they have experience at, at the club level and at the college level where you're consistently playing in tournaments, and, and it can be exhausting. So, you know, if you look at it from that perspective, it might be a bit of a break on the players. But, uh, you know, regardless, stamina you'd think would be uh, a factor today a little bit. Absolutely. You have to – when the players uh, go out to play these um, professional ultimate games, it's a completely different mindset than a tournament format. Mm -hmm. You they're athletes, they're competitors. They're never not giving 100%, but I think that it's fair to say the 100% that they're giving looks a lot different. When you're playing in a game like this, you only you know you only have one other game today and you've got a nice break. Some of that 100% channels into how can I maintain my intensity across, you know, 5 or 6 hours of dead time. Um I think what we're going to see from the red, um they're the ones facing down that large gap. They're going to come in, they're going to you know give that 100% they're going to make sure that they're taking care of legs, not putting people in positions where they're going to get injured. But I think after that game, you're going to immediately see people going to take care of their bodies, players hydrating, players continuing to stay loose and limber and stay engaged. Conversation probably won't be flowing as loose and easy as it was ahead <laughs> of the game. From the pride, it's a lot more, you know, come in, play this game hard, play this game hot. Then they've got a much more reasonable break. It would feel like we'd call it a buy, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a buy period at a tournament yep. in the club season. Um, They'll have that to recalibrate and make any adjustments that they think they need to make as a team. Again, very focused on themselves today. And then they're going to go into that game with the gridlock who maybe it, people love the first round by. I wonder if that's going to be a disadvantage today for the gridlock. They had to travel the farthest there started. We started seeing players stroll in and get in their seats, but you know, yeah, I mean, you could you could think about it from the perspective that Columbus, I mean, they, they might kind of be a little bit warmed up after that first game, and, and New York with a long way to travel out here um, as, as, you know, they're rolling in and getting ready for their game after this. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, again, that game will also uh, be broadcast here as well. We'll pick them all up here for you um, as Charlie and I hang out here all day today uh, for some fun Premier Ultimate League, and uh, we're just about ready to get this game started. Uh, Charlie? Yeah, and wanted to remind you all that um, today's Universe Point uh, Productions broadcast of the Premier Ultimate League is brought to you by Somerset Paving in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Somerset Paving is Detroit's expert in asphalt and concrete paving. Somerset Paving, take the right way to quality. We'd also like to take some time to mention materials data management from Indianapolis, Indiana. Thank you to one of our local sponsors, MDMI. Uh, they have the experience and drive necessary to help your organization deploy the best in engineer engineering, materials, information, management solutions. Check us out on LinkedIn for current job openings and our website, materialsdatamanagement.com, for a list of our services and software. Data importers, exporters, and consulting too, MDMI is here for you. 
You're looking at the Indy Red Huddle as they get ready to play this game. Uh, Charlie, you know, we, we talked about, you know, club a little bit, these players playing in tournaments. And, you know, for people who just aren't familiar, I mean, they, these are players who, I mean, they, they spend a lot of time playing the game. And, and, you know, outside of this league, they've also got the club teams where, I mean, they're playing in tournaments where you could be playing, you know, upwards of four or five, maybe even more games per game. They they travel across state lines, and, and then it's it's all for this right here, right? You know, this is this is the big time. So, I mean, we talked about the playoff scenarios. The Pride pretty much need to, uh, you know, win out to give themselves the best chance. Red so far and control their own destiny at two and zero. Oh. Do you think that pressure is starting to to play a factor for either one of these teams at this point in the season? When you look at that postseason picture, I think to you and I, yes. I think if we talk to anybody on those rosters, no. The only pressure that they're feeling is the pressure of the game that's in front of them on the field right now. Um, you know, they're very aware of the scenar- different scenarios that they're looking at. They're very aware that you know, of the destiny that's within their grasp and in their control. Um, one of the beautiful things I think about ultimate players though, you actually, you know, people think that the highest level of coaching and uh, competition has to come from leagues like the NFL, from the WNBA, Mm -hmm. you know, from Olympic athletes. I would argue very much that you see a much higher level of competition um, from both coaching staffs and from the player staff um, than you would expect for um, a semi-professional league. They are going to come out and give it their hardest. That means also that they're tremendously mentally tough. They know what it takes to go out and win a game. They know how to put aside any of the concerns of everyday life, any of the concerns about the greater playoff picture. They know how to put that side and go out and play 48 minutes of hard ultimate. So we're getting closer here uh, to the opening poll to get things started. It'll be interesting, you know, what kind of picture we get of that crosswind uh, when that first thris- frisbee is uh, thrown here on the opening possession of the game uh, last week understand that you know the wind was coming in a pretty strong wind gust the frisbee wasn't able to travel very very far down the field in the opening poll but it looks like it'll be the red who are pulling to start so pride brings their offensive line out to get things going once again red 2 and 0 coming into this one for the pride they are 0 and 2 head coach for Columbus is Ben Murphy and then Blake Vanderbush the head coach of the Indy Red as we get closer Red to the co- start of this one. Absolutely. Red coaching staff also featuring uh, Jackie Lai, most notably one of the founders of the Indie Red. It's wonderful to see that she has stayed so heavily involved with that organization. Very definitely uh, a strong sip to sail through the storm of setting up a professional ultimate league and a professional ultimate team. And also here with the Red polling first, we'll get our first look of that 3-3-1 zone that you were talking about, how they're going to try and kind of trap the pride on that near sideline as we are set and ready to go. Pull goes up from Makeda Matabor. That's number two. Trying to break the zone early out on the far side of the field. And we saw immediately Penny Wu, number 47, had the disc in her hands. Um, she is one of those strong handlers that's really going to be guiding the Columbus Pride. But in the backfield with her, we see a number 78, Tico Lim, as she receives the disc. Another very strong presence is going to really look to be, you know, to attack that cup that the, red are, that the Red are running. We'll see how patient they are to get through that cup as you just see, you know, the three red players there just trying to make it uncomfortable as the Disc gets moved back a little further downfield. They're able to break through it. Big bid, though, from Anastasia Foster. She is an athletic force. You're going to see her very, very active in that middle, middle space is what it's referred to in that zone. Someone who's happy to jump to either side and really look to stuff those straight up the middle of the field throws. Move back to Wu. Huge cross field. Goodness gracious. Crook will track that down. No, not quite. It's the wind carried that one. That's really the first look that we could see from that cross wind. It was Mary Turner, actually, the target downfield who just, I mean, she was wide open, but you see the wind kind of the tail end of that throw. Get that Frisbee just out of her reach and our first look at the pride here on offense. And there's the wind again. You know, that's a big down. That's a big downfield throw, and the wind picks it up. Tilts that edge up just enough and pushes it straight down that low side sideline. It was Julia Hill trying to work it upfield. It looked like you had two players, uh, two cutters there who might have popped open for the red. But as you mentioned, Charlie, that wind played a factor. So Wu gets things started here again for the pride. 
So back to trying to work through that zone. We're seeing a lot of the uh, other handlers, and that's number 24 with the disc for um, the pride as she moves up to Wu, who continues up the field. We're going to see a lot of those handlers, number 24 and number 78, um, really looking to ex expand the amount of options that Penny has and the rest of the um, Pride team has, not just ahead of them, but behind them as well. Uh, attacking negative space to then find positive space is a huge way that uh, an offensive an offense finds success in a zone. Yeah, nice rhythm here for the Pride. So they're getting close to the end zone, and that's our first score of the day. Sammy Wong gets open. It is a goal for the Pride. They lead one nothing as they really just kind of broke down that red zone very well, Charlie. Absolutely. That was about as textbook as you could ask. One turnover per team as we get the highlight up. That's number six, Champ Pruitt to Penny Wu. Takes her time with the disc and finds Sammy Wong. Um, as I said, that's a pretty textbook zone offense point. The pride players were very content to take their time, evaluate the looks that the red were giving them, and very quickly piece together the available spaces. And we, once they had you know, solved that puzzle, it was right up the field and into that easy goal. And it's important to, you know, I'd imagine to have some patience when you're up against that zone because, you know, you, you can't always move up the field as quickly as you'd like to. Sometimes you're, you're working backwards a little bit. You've only got 10 seconds to throw the disc uh, before, you know, that stall warning gets thrown out there. And so it's important to stay patient. Work with your handlers, as you saw what the pride did there. I mean, I mean, their their cutters worked really nice. You talked about that middle middle space. I felt like they stretched out that zone pretty well, just finding the empty pockets of grass as they exchanged it in between their handlers. And and I mean, that that patience really paying off there. Yep, we're about to see the pull go up from number three, Domenica Sutherland. Um, really cut her teeth in the Texas Ultimate scene before making her way to Pittsburgh, where she helps play and steer the Pittsburgh Parcha chi Parcha ship. So how do the red respond, trailing by one? They're moving the disc up to field. That's number 29 for the red, Emily Schloniger. So steer won't with it now as it's worked around between the handlers. So we're seeing a zone set from the red. Ah, but and the a nice D put on there by Sutherland. Absolutely. I met for the pride. My apologies there, Harrison. So now we're going to get a look at the D-line offense. Oh, but a short one. turnover. So it's picked up. Can the red capitalize? They'll try to get a look, work it up ahead to Dudley on the far side. Doesn't like that look, though. Swings back to the middle. Outstretched, a nice grab to keep the possession alive. Backhand throw, one-handed snag, and the red tie it at one. What a layout, what a grab. Way to secure the disc. We're able to break the mark. The forehand lefty snag, and then... Wow, what a catch for the red to tie it at one. Not Eliza much to be Hutchings. Said. Eliza Hutchings, not much to be said there. What an athletic play, and more importantly, way to watch the disc all the way into her hand and secure that through the contact with the ground. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, it, it start, started there, right? There's that turnover on the possession, and then... The Pride immediately turned it over on a swing to one of their handlers, and the Red were just able to turn right around and, and knock things back up at one with 8.16 left to play here in the first quarter. So one of the things that Rochelle and I talked about last week on the broadcast was how the wind and the conditions affect throws and catches. A lot of people don't think about how that plays into your ability to catch the disc, but you've got to really stop and pay that attention, get the disc all the way into your hands. If you don't, the wind will make a fool of you every time, Harrison. And here is the pull deep downfield, stays in play. What a gorgeous pull from the Indianapolis Red. So can the pride respond? We're seeing an adjustment in the zone set from the red just a little bit. They're crowding two of their three-person wall in around the cup more, really tightening down the available looks. Pruitt moves back to Lim to Pruitt again. 
Penny Wu very active in that uh, popping space, what you'd call it, that space right in the middle of where that cup is. And tries to throw up field, couldn't quite get it to Mallory Griffith. Turnover. We're going to get a look at a slightly different offensive line from the Annapolis Red, number 77, Jamie Hill picking up. Julia Hill, my apologies. McClurkin upfield and a nice defense put on from the pride. Corin Pruitt knocked it to the turf as it gets swung back out to the middle of the field. Lim finds the open cutter. Worked ahead to Wong. Thrown up nearing the end zone here. As the pride try to retake the lead. Pruitt attacking. Trying to find an open cutter. A nice defense put on there from the pride to force a turnover. Deep in their own end, they'll try to huck down field. Anna McClurkin trying to reel that in while watching the sideline. Not going to get that done, unfortunately. Disc sails out of bounds. Now, when not able to keep it in play, McClurkin was open down field. We're going to get another look at take that. Take a look D. back. Nice active hands there from Haley Bannis. Big fake from the from number 24. Uh, that is Jessica Larson. As they move up field, open receiver, but no one ahead of her. And a score for Columbus. Their second of the day. They take a 2-1 to one lead. That was number 21, Mallory Griffith, who reels in the score around the active red defender. If you take a look back on the turn, the pride attacking quickly. And a nice score for Mallory Griffith. And that came from Sammy Wong from Chicago, Illinois. It's a little bit of a commute down here. Even bigger commute over to Columbus, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we've seen three points so far. Uh, I think we're getting some pretty active defense this week. It's a lot more uh, compelling, a lot more opportunity for players to create plays than we've seen um, last week, if you remember from the game against the strike that the Red had. I think that's going to continue to be something we see all day. Harrison is uh, players looking to generate those deeds on their own instead of waiting for the weather to affect that. Yeah, we've we've seen uh, an active game defensively so far. So nobody's been able to get a break point here. As it'll be the pride pulling once again. They take a 2-1 to one lead. It was 6.07 left in the first quarter. Still looking for their first win on the season. They lost by just one to Minnesota, 14 to 13, their last time out. So we see the poll. We'll see if the Red can respond. So we're seeing a very shallow, almost more wall-like cup from the pride that they are clamp using to clamp down on the Red handlers. Not taking away quite as many upfield options so much as they are really preventing that swing, but Dudley finds her way through. And there's the swing there as it's worked further up the field. Hernandez. Around to Oland. Plenty of space to work with, but it's a turnover. In and out of the hands of Kirker. And we're seeing it. These players are not waiting for the weather to give them the disc, nor are they waiting for the other team to give it away. They're attacking early and often. So we'll see that red zone try to force another turnover here to get it back, or can the Pride extend their lead? Into the hands of Cunningham. Swinged around. We're seeing number 32, Shanee Rosenthal, very active in the deep space in that red zone, really making sure that none of those big looks go up. Shanee is going to be there to knock them all down. Starting, I think it's starting to frustrate the pride offense. They're not getting those uh, huge gainers that they were getting earlier in the game. This is Walker with the Frisbee, trying to be active with it, moves it back to Umeno. More patience here with that red zone as it's dumped back to Cunningham. Moves back to Omeno. She tries to swing it around, and it's going to be a turnover. I think the red player got a hand on that disc, Harrison. I don't think that that went fully uninterrupted. 
was not an easy pass to complete, and I think you might be right. As Steerwalt cuts ahead for the score. I know, actually, check that. Make it uh, Shawnee Rosenthal. Ties things up at two. Yeah, so right. To capitalize on the turnover here and just good awareness on the cut to the end zone. Yeah, those are Pittsburgh Parchet teammates. Kristen Duds, as she's known colloquially, Dudley. Upfield to her Parchet teammate, Shani Rosenthal. They've got massive amounts of chemistry. They helped uh, get Parcha to a Nationals appearance at Club Nationals last year, uh, finishing, I believe, eighth in the nation after starting 16th. Wow. So, you know, I mean, that's just a, a good example of the talent that's here in this league. And, and that chemistry, you know, can pay off when you play, you know, in practice over and over again and, and play in as many games and tournaments that those two have you know, out of season. And it's able to pay off as the Red tie it at two apiece. Having someone who knows exactly what you want uh, when you're a handler with the disc in your hand is wonderful because you know that you can put it up and they're going to be there to receive it. We watch it pay off for the red right here as they tied it back up at two. Still haven't seen a break point yet. We've just gone back and forth here in the first quarter. Just under four minutes left. As the pole goes out of play. We'll see if the pride have a response of their own. Jessica Larson will tap it in. Red already set up in that zone, though the deep defender off screen, taking up a lot more real estate than they did going the other direction. Nice catch by Tiffany Lim. They call her Tico Harrison. Don't know where it comes from, though. <laughs> you call her Tico, but you don't know the origins. We'll roll with it. Big around break from Penny Wu. That was a gorgeous forehand. Broken through that cup. Worked around to Larson. We're seeing Penny put up a lot of those creative throws. I think that's going to be a huge key for the red. Uh, for the red is stopping those, trying to figure out how they can affect the shape with active hands or active feet, taking away some of those spaces. She's limb with it. Say stay active. Woo. There it is again. Nice straight throw. through the cup. They're patient. They're just laying on accurate throws when they need to to make that cup have to work a little bit more. And it's paying dividends every single time. They're able to get into those spaces on that high side. Essentially, it will. Now swung around. Big high release. Oh, and just too far. Tried to find a Pruitt for a score. That's Julia Hill walking it back up. And they'll immediately swing it around, get it away from that sideline. Nice throw to move it upfield for the red here. Big gain for the red, but no one downfield to continue that look, and they get uh, give the pride plenty of time to set the defense back on. Some daylight to work with as Hutchings throws it upfield, winds up being a turnover into the hands of Wu. What a rip Long downfield. throw, but not going to be able to connect on the other end. I love the hustle. Whether that player was going to come up with the disc or not, I love the hustle of bidding for it anyway, Harrison. That's I just mean, wonderful when it, to see. When in doubt, lay out, Charlie. When in doubt, lay out. It's been a couple years since I heard that one, Harrison. <laughs> so the red trying to capitalize. And just in and out of the hands of Hutchings. Red trying to get back on defense. Zach Cup tries to trap the pride here on that near sideline. That crosswind coming towards us on the broadcast and nearly a nice throw up field to Griffith. One minute left here in the quarter, still tied at two. Red trying to get a break point. It's a huge sky from Jalen Baumgartner. We saw her last week make the only upwind score for the Red. Looks like she's going to make her presence felt again today. D put on from Wu, and she immediately throws it up to Pruitt. Further downfield, Pride might have some numbers advantages here. Content to swing it, though, get the offense set up and play a calm game. Under 30 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. As we approach the end, remember that the team that maintains possession when the clock hits zero in the first three quarters gets to play the rest of their possession out. 
So the Pride aren't necessarily feeling any pressure right now. Very content to play good possession Frisbee. Yeah, good possession Frisbee is, is how they've gotten their two scores so far today. Just being patient with this red zone as Wu pops right through and breaks it, but throws it, and it winds up as a turnover. One second, the disc is tapped in. Red will get a chance here. Nice catch from Timmons. Around hot defense from Champ Pruitt. Red active here on offense. Swung around to the far sideline. Worked up ahead again to Timmons. Nearly the end of the first quarter there, but the Red are working upfield. Mallory Griffith uh, spent her last couple years playing for the Columbus Cocktails. It's not surprising to see her very active with the hands there on defense. That's how she cut her teeth on that team. Hill throws up field. Nice snag by Foster. Just outside of the end zone, and the Red will get a score to end the first quarter. And not only was that score the end of our first quarter, that's the first break we have seen today as the Red take advantage. As you take a look back at the replay here, it's Timmons just at the end, popping open. A throw delivered well by Anastasia Foster. And it is the Red who lead after one, three to two, with Charlie uh, our first break point there. It's a while till we saw one, but I mean, the Red force a turnover. They pick up the disc with about one second left in that first quarter. And you mentioned, right, that time expires, you get to finish out that possession. And I mean, if, if they don't have, you know, that quick active awareness there to pick up the Frisbee and get going, I mean, I mean, we, we may not see that score at the end of that first quarter. Absolutely. Um, again, it's those moments where that, you know, the pressure seeps in just a little bit and it's remembering, hey, we need to get our hands on this disc so we can, you know, main get this possession going. But then remembering, hey, now we're not up against the clock. We, all we need to do is complete passes, you know, on our way to a score. And that's what we did. That's what we saw. Yeah, we saw him do just that. Led to the first break point. So, Red, the home team today, they lead this one 3-2. to two And uh, probably a bit of a juice score, some momentum going the Reds' way after getting that one. 100%. For those of you at home, a break is when... Uh, the team that starts the possession on offense um, turns the disc over or um, a D is forced, a block is forced by the defensive team. And the defensive team then capitalizes on that opportunity and completes a score themselves. They call that breaking the offense. Uh, it can change the entire landscape of an ultimate game. It can mean anything from um, forcing the other team's offense to go out in second time, play those legs again, you know, may affect the wind that they're seeing. Um, it may just be the one thing that you need to take a game off what's called serve, which is, you know, each team kind of trading back and forth on those scores. If you can get serve going in your favor, it's a real easy way to, you know, ride to a victory. So we talked a lot pregame and through that first quarter about that red zone. And uh, we did see a 3-3-1 there, and, and, and they kind of adjusted it. We saw the pride work through the cup a little bit. But on the other end, the pride, what have you seen – from them defensively and what are kind of your takeaways on what their strategy might be here to, to try and slow down the red? I think it's the amount of activity that we're seeing today from Columbus. Every single player on the field right there has very, very hot, very active hands. They're trying to get fingers on every single disc that goes up from the red, really, really, really trying to frustrate those throwers. Additionally, we're seeing a little bit more of a junk set from them where they're, um, playing a lot of on-person defense, but one or two players at varying times are jumping out into those lanes trying to really poach um, poach some of those looks for the red uh, without giving up that you know hard-person defense. Um, I think it's paying off. They're forcing a lot of difficult throws. They're forcing a lot of difficult catches. We saw that defense from Champ Pruitt and from Allard Griffith directly on their people and then immediately frustrating their marks. Um, we're going to see if that's sustainable over the rest of the game. That can be very taxing on the body. How have you seen the wind play a factor so far? We talked about that crosswind. We've got wind today moving towards us uh, at times down on the field. Uh, the Red were going to try to use that to their strategy. We've seen some some throws go awry here and there. Uh, I mean, so, so how have you seen the wind play an impact on this one so far? Uh, it's really dictating the way that players have to shape their throws first and foremost. Uh, it's allowing the Red to run their zone. Normally with no wind, you're going to play a lot of person defense because the zone is really easy to go up and over. Um, 
though the way that the red are forced to shape that their zone defense as they really try to trap on that low side is the first one but the way that the throws are shaped really doing your best um as a thrower in this wind to get it to your teammates downfield but not giving enough edge that the wind can take it and push it back towards us harrison so we've seen at, that a couple times yeah and, and we're looking at ben murphy now talking to his team a head coach for the pride he's got the clipboard out what do you think the message is from him going into the second quarter i feel like the pride have you know played a fairly solid game so far I think the message right now is pretty simple. You know, it's the beginning of the second quarter. There's still a whole lot of game left. Mm -hmm. Let's go out. Let's continue to maintain our identity as an active team on defense, as a fast and athletic team on offense. But stop and remember, hey, take that extra half second. Make sure that throw is 100% before you let it go. Just about ready to start the second quarter. The pride will be on the pole to so the offensive line out there for the Indy Red. And just off screen at the bottom, that's Domenica Sutherland again with the pull going up for the pride. Puts a lot of edge on it. Going to see if she can pick up some extra yards with the roll, and she does. So stopped immediately. Steer won't will run to pick it up immediately. The, hander, the handlers will start working the possession. Dudley. He's got the Frisbee now. Steerwalt comes in to try and find some room to work with. It gets swung around now. Steerwalt has it. Dudley again. Quick movement here from the red. Oland up through back to Dudley. They're going to be very content to send that pride zone back and forth across the field, really try to wear the legs out on that pride cup. Yeah, you'll notice those three players that just kind of continue to hover around the mark, and they're running that zone as it gets worked up to Steerwalt, and, and that can be very tiresome in a lengthy possession as – they try to go for it all here on the throw. The Pride were able to wrap it up pretty well. That's Charlotte Corner. Uh, trademark red hat that she wears in just about every game she plays. Also from Pittsburgh, Parcha. Big representation from that team in this game. We talked earlier about just how that can help out chemistry-wise. A lot of experience playing together in club as they break through the cup. Worked ahead to corner. Deep downfield. They've got an open cutter. And good defense was thrown on there from the pride, or the red, pardon me, as Shawnee Rosenthal got there to get a hand on it. You know what? I think that she put a little bit too much height on that disc corner did when she let it go. That gave Shawnee Rosenthal so much time to catch back up. Rosenthal has it now as it goes back to Dudley, swung around to the far side. Red worked up field. Fairly well the last time they had the Frisbee against this defense. So they're just patient with it. You really see they are content to use their handlers as they move it up to Steer Walton. Just get that cup to be running a little bit more, get some tired legs. As Milton swings it around and finds Dudley again. Huge look. Nice catch as the red move inside. Milton tracked it down and a score. Maya Hernandez flashes open there just inside the end zone, and the Red go up by two. Maya, who was hurt last week, returns to action today, and a big score there as you take a look. The great track down from Claire Milton. Taps it in, and the easy score for the Red as they extend their lead to two, their largest of the game. Hernandez gets one there. Charlie, I mean, what what happened there? How were the Red able to, to get that much field? Something that we're seeing that zone do, you talked about how patient they were being. Kind of that next de next piece of depth for that patience we saw is you'll notice that they did not, they were not just content to take swings that moved them back down to that low side or that trap side. They stayed in that middle of the field space to upper field space. Doing that meant that they had plenty of looks to um, you know, plenty of looks to choose from. A lot more field real estate until they got the shot that they wanted over there to um, uh, number 40 Skittles Milton. That's some great movement from the red that pays off. They lead four to two. Can the pride respond? Larson with the Frisbee now is she'll look to dissect the zone. Instead swings around between the handlers. Goes back to Larson. 
down in that cup, one of our first looks at Linnea Frazier. You can see her there, number 20, uh, in her bright red hat. Uh, played with the Oberlin Flying Manti, a D3 school with a lot of success uh, in college frisbee in the last few years. Very, very, very active, very, very long arms can be very frustrating to play against, especially inside a cup. Yeah, if you can imagine just trying to find passing lanes for that frisbee and if you've gotten some lengthy defenders out there, it, it just can make it hard to find those passing lanes as it does get popped up ahead to Pruitt. Pruitt throwing further ahead as the Pride work it upfield in the hands of Turner and moved back to Pruitt. They've got momentum. They had That was a whole bunch of yards shoot up very fast there, Harrison. So Lim swings it around to Wu. Wu up ahead. Nice catch. In the deep space there, I think that's uh, Corey Auger, number 84, that we're seeing. She's, again, really trying to stop those downfield looks, forcing the pride to keep it between their handlers and immediate upfield cutters. So Larson breaks through with a pass to Wong as it gets swung further around out to Pruitt. More patience here from the pride. Something we're not getting from the Pride right now that may be a key to breaking through this zone is attacking more of that middle space of the field just like that throw from Wu did. So able to break through, get it upfield. Wu has it again. The more you can force that cup to move and the more that you can force the zone players to have to react, it's not going to matter, though. Turnover. Lim a little bit too far on the throw. You wonder if the wind was a factor there. Bannis throw is too high there, so it's a turnover. Turner gets play going again. And Wu some good, on that far side. Good help defense from the uh, red zone as they had uh, number uh, 24 go down to help stop that deep throw until Corey Auger as the deep deep could catch back up and reclaim her spot. Right through the cup, the Pride continue to work upfield. Wong on the far side. Goes up ahead, Turner being patient, and a nice easy score for the Pride. They bring it within one. Patience pays off Harrison every single time. They got the looks that they were looking for. If you look back at the replay, Patience pays off here as Jessica Larson flashes open in the end zone. The Pride bring it within one. A break point could tie it here. We've only seen one so far today. Here was 647 left in the second quarter. Red lead by one. Trying to remain unbeaten on the season and move to 3-0. and and Charlie talked about patience paying off. I mean, that, that really has been how the Pride have been able to find the end zone today. It's staying patient on those possessions, really try to work around that zone, tire them out and then have it pay off toward the end. We saw you know, the wind play a factor a little bit on that possession. Um, uh, both times we saw it lead to turnovers for both teams there, but ultimately it's that patience from Columbus that pays off. I think that in wind like this, uh, you may hear it affectionately referred to as a thrower's wind. Um, we're certainly seeing that, the stronger throwers from each team taking advantage, but it also means that they're gonna, there might be more discs given away than either team is content with. We'll see how that plays a factor as this game continues along. Red with the possession now as Kirker pops open, moves it further upfield. And a nice, oh, nearly a grab, but no. It was in and out of the hands of Maya Hernandez. And a discussion here. I wonder if we're getting our first foul call of the game, Charlie. There certainly was a little extracurricular activity uh, between the offender and defender there as Maya tries to secure the catch. So Hernandez, who had the most recent score for the red, will pick up the disc and play gets going again after the foul call. So Hernandez dumps it back to Dudley. That was a brilliant footwork by Dudley. Harrison Ca pops open, and the red score again. Back up by two. And that all begins with the footwork from Kristen Dudley that you're going to see here on replay in just a second. Really attacking in that dumb space until she got the open look. And finds a Bree Harrison streaking in from the back of the stack uh, to the open space. 
Easy throw, easy catch. Another goal for the Red. So the Red lead 5-3 to three and mentioned Dudley's name here a few times. And she has been very active of the handlers today for the Red. You mentioned her footwork. She gets open on the dump. That winds up opening that throw as Harrison uh, pops open on the cut to the near side. I mean, just how vital of a role has Dudley played so far today from what you've seen in this Red offense? They like to get the disc into her hands. Uh, the pride know it. That's actually something that um, we heard from Domenica Sutherland and from Ben Murphy as they're worried about what they're going to do trying to contain um, Duds' impact on this game. Um, I think, though, that Duds is somebody who's going to go out and get hers anyway. Um, she knows she's a very savvy player and still has a tremendous amount of athleticism to back up her game. So it'll be very difficult to contain her. They may have more luck in trying to deny her the disc. So the pole goes out of play here on the near side. It will be carried in by Penelope Wu. So Columbus will see if they can answer themselves, uh, get, get an answer here to the red score. They trail by two for the second time today. little difference in the defensive set we're seeing from the red right now, a lot more person-based. And immediately worked up field. A nice throw from Wu into the hands of Pruitt as Pruitt swings it around. Up ahead to Wu, and then it further goes all the way down to Wong. Quickly, Columbus working up field. Yeah, that may have gotten, in finding those extra yards off that secured catch from Sammy Wong, they were able to pick up an extra 30, 40 yards all of a sudden. Sorry, that was an exaggeration. We'll call it 20 yards. <laughs> Here's Lim with it now, the handler trying to find somebody to throw it to. High in the stall count, lobs it toward the end zone. And the Frisbee gets knocked to the ground. The Red were able to cover that one up well. Yeah, that Hail Mary was not brought down by the pride the way they hoped it would. Two Red defenders in the area able to easily secure the D. So we'll see if Indianapolis can get another break point. Absolute nice sauce on that break throw from Anna McClurkin. The Red quickly moving up field. So it gets worked around to McClurkin. Very savvy play from the young Frazier as she chews up a lot of that uh, space that was freed up on the swing. Foster swings it around and McClurkin again. And a deep throw as Foster's open. Is the Frisbee going to curl and play just out of the hands of Foster? Would have been a big score for the Red. They would have gone up by three. Foster tried to lay out for it. A hustle that we appreciate up here in the booth, Charlie. Mm -hmm. I think in that scenario... Uh, Foster stopping to look to make sure the throw was going to go up. I think if she continues that cut, um, knowing that she's got the throwers to put it up. Wu uh, immediately is going to huck down field to start play. Sorry, Charlie. She just kind of winds up punting it away there. Uh, if you want to return to your point about Foster's cut. No trouble at all. I think Foster w just trusts her receivers. Her uh, handler is going to put that up. It's a secured goal. Wu takes matters back into her own hands and forces the Red to work from uh, much deeper back on their side of the field. So Matamore up to Foster, a nice one-handed snag, and she'll try to throw it downfield, and a great layout D put on from Penelope Wu. And she's just been all over the field so far today as, as a handler. You see it on defense there. And that, that might have saved a score as the Pride try to get one back. Take a look back as we get a stoppage in play. Foster thought she had a player open and just perfectly sniffed out by Wu for the D. Sniffed out is, the, I think, the perfect description. We watched her look up field, evaluate the danger that the cutter proposed, uh, look back at Foster as Foster went into her windup to deliver that throw. Penny adjusts her angle, attacks into that lane, and lays out for that block. That's a, a tremendously high level of play there. So we've got a timeout on the field as players are going to hydrate. Five to three, red, leave, or red lead, pardon me, with 235 left in the second. And we're going to take some quick time to acknowledge another one of our sponsors, Everyone's Joy Photography from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Everyone's Joy Photography, photographer for UND Sports Teams and Indy Red's official photographer as well. doesn't matter if you need sports or fashion, we've got you covered at any event. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, or online at everyonesjoyphotography.com. So what do you think the discussion is in the timeout between both teams? We'll start with the Pride because they've got possession. 
um, after the the D that was thrown on by Wu. Um, but but what do you think? You know the, the discussion is in their huddle. Uh, I think that they're a little bit thrown off right now by the Reds' shift to person-based defense. They'd gotten pretty comfortable attacking through the zone. Now, having to take a look at these athletic defenders from the Indy Red, the looks are changing, the angles are changing, and they're having to account a lot more for knowing that the receiver is going to be very, very pressed as they try to secure these throws. Um, they also have a lot of field to work through, and it's been a long point so far. For the Red, I think it's as simple as, can we stuff this here in the first 10 yards and get an easy end zone look. I think we've seen uh, some bigger throws be made in this second quarter. Is that a sign that players are just getting more comfortable uh, with that crosswind that's played a factor today? Absolutely. Uh, there are players who know that they can throw in any wind in any conditions. There are some players who like to take some more time, really evaluate the way that the wind is going to affect uh, what they're looking at. And then once they get comfortable, settle into that rhythm, they start delivering. Well, it gets tapped in in the hands of Wu. She's one of those players who has that confidence to throw in a lot of wins. We've seen her huck it downfield plenty of times today as Lim has it now, center of the field. And swung around to that far sideline. Red right back into their zone, though. They're making fools of me up here, Harrison. <laughs> He's about to mention that, and I wonder if the Pride expected that out of the timeout for them to switch back into that zone. As they're deep into their own end zone. It's a coaching decision that makes a ton of sense. Um... Run person defense, when you get a turnover on the end zone, clamp down with your zone and see if you can force them backwards and maybe pick up a Callahan on the way. So here's Wu again. We've seen patience pay off for the pride. Just over two minutes left to play. That Frisbee tracked on the sideline nicely by Schroeder. Wu tries to get back for a dump cut, but it's not there. Schroeder has to throw around the defender to get it to her. Wu breaking the cup. Big high With release. With some risk and a nice defense put on there by McGrew. Yeah, that disc sailed and sat up. McGrew had plenty of time to run up, jump over her defender, and get a hand on that disc to force that block. Foster open on the far side, quickly worked up. Red knocking on the door, but just out of the hands of Baumgartner. And Baumgartner's an athletic player. She showcased it all season for the Red. Disc just a little bit too high for her to reel in, though. you got to do your cutters some favors on those throws. Minute and a half left to go here in the first half. Got a long possession here. We had a timeout called in the middle of it that extended it a little bit as Wu walks upfield, taps the disc into play. Remember that the clock stops uh, between pulls and on timeout, so they didn't lose any um, time real estate uh, during that timeout, but that doesn't mean that the point feels any shorter to the players. Wu... Long throw downfield as the point goes over the five-minute mark and a nice snag up ahead by Turner. Yeah, she read that one start to finish a little bit better than Baumgartner did and was able to secure it and keep the pride possession going. Mast has it now. On the doorstep, pride get the score. Sammy Wong cuts open in that far corner. The Pride once again bring it back within one with 39 seconds left to play in the first half. A point that lasted over five minutes ends like this. I think that one's got to feel really good to the Pride, Harrison. Um, Five-minute point, that is daunting and brutal on the body. It only hurts more to the team that has to walk off the field knowing they didn't secure, didn't secure the score and is immediately relieving and refreshing to the team that does. You've got some tired legs, and it'll be interesting as you look at just the bigger scope of today. You know, by the time we get around to to our third game today between New York and the Red, um, if we will see a bit more lengthy points as, as players start to get tired as as the game moves along. And um, but but yeah, that that was a pretty long one there. A timeout in the middle of it, but 39.6 on the clock. The Red will get the Frisbee back, and they will try to answer it once again. The largest lead so far today has been two. The Pride uh, have led this game, but since a break point to end the first quarter, the Red have taken a little bit more control. The Pride are hanging around, though, here in the first half. We see that huge rip on the pull go up from Penny Wu. Um, catches a little bit too much edge and sails out of bounds, but the height that that had on it, that looked like it was going to sail it straight back to the red end zone. So Dudley will tap it into play. 
Quickly upfield. This might be a turnover as Wu will chase it down, make sure it hits the turf. So an early turnover in the possession. Wu is immediately going to heave it downfield. And it winds up in the hands of corner. Not inside the end zone yet. Clock has expired. This will be the last possession here of this first half. Can the Pride capitalize? Wu comes up from behind and just in and out of the hands of Pruitt. Pruitt's going to want that one back, Harrison. And that has got to hurt the Pride. They could have tied it up going in to halftime. And we'll see how that plays a factor here later in this game is if this one stays close moving through. In and out of the hands of Pruitt through the first two quarters. Indy Red lead by one, 5-4 to four here in some Premier Ultimate League action. Charlie, what would you see there in that first half? I saw two teams that are a lot more active in the defensive space, trying to create opportunities for themselves that they can turn into points on the other side. We saw the Red have a lot of success with that um, as they secured two breaks in the first half. Um, we're seeing a lot of different looks. These teams are very content to use the um, hyper-intelligence of their players to shape the zones as they feel uh, as they feel is necessary. Remember that coaches can only observe what's going on and then try to make adjustments. The players have a huge amount of agency in how the defenses are shaped point to point, even possession to possession in those points. Um, and I think we're seeing kind of mutating looks from both teams as they feel the wind out uh, between each throw, um, you know, and use that information to adjust the angles that they take away, um, force the throws that they're forcing. I'd like to remind you, our broadcast is brought to you by Parker Mortgage Team. That rate you found on the internet is no better than a dead disc, and it's really only part of your mortgage equation. You need to go to Mortgage Advisor to walk you through the process and paint the whole picture. Check out the Parker Mortgage Team in downtown Noblesville. Basically, you are Vincent Van Gogh, too. And then also Zen Lab. You want to start or deepen your yoga practice, but not ready to plunge into a physical yoga studio? Zen Lab was created with four things in mind. Online access, affordability, flexibility, and community. Your teacher, Kristen, strives for you to feel safe and free of judgment in your yoga practice. Beginners are welcome. Go to zenlabindy.com to learn more. And we will step aside here at halftime with a red lead 5-4 to four over the Columbus Pride.
Premier Ultimate League action on a Saturday. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Indy Red lead the Columbus Pride 5-4 to four at halftime. And Harrison, I'm going to take some time here um, to read some messages uh, on behalf of the Indianapolis Red. Indy Red denounces the anti-trans bill passed by the Indiana State Legislature. On May 24th, an effort will take place to reconsider the House Bill 1041. We, the Indy Red, stand in solidarity with trans athletes of all ages. Indy Red monetarily supports organizations that help the LGBTQIA plus community in Indianapolis. I know the Columbus Pride do the same. For each game, Indy Red athletes have individually decided to opt in to donate that game's salary towards Indianapolis LGBTQIA plus organizations, including Trinity Haven, Gender Nexus, G-E-K-C-O, and Indiana Youth Group. Please visit IndyRed.org slash mission to learn more or to make a donation to one or more of these organizations yourself. Um, we'd also take, like to take some time to recognize some of our other sponsors today. Somerset Paving in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Somerset Paving is Detroit's expert in asphalt and concrete paving. Somerset Paving, take the right way to quality. Materials Data Management from Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, we'd like to thank them as one of our local sponsors. They have the experience and drive necessary to help your organization de deploy the best in engineering materials, information, management solutions. Check them out on LinkedIn for current job openings and on their website, materialsdatamanagement.com, for a list of their services and software. Data importers, exporters, and consulting, too. MDMI is here for you. I'd like to recognize some Frisbee-based sponsors. Uh, VC, Discraft, and Layout, uh, several different apparel companies. VC out of Montreal, Canada. And then Everyone's Joy Photography from Fort Wayne. Everyone's Joy Photography, UND Sports Team Photographer, and Indie Red's Official Photographer. Don't matter if you need sports or fashion, we've got you covered at any event. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, or online at everyonesjoyphotography.com. That is Charlie Lowe. I'm Harrison Silcox with you on the broadcast this afternoon. The first of three Premier Ultimate League games today, Indy Red and Columbus Pride. Playing each other right now, 5-4 to four is the halftime score. And just going back to the end of that second quarter, Charlie, this game was very close to being tied. The Pride nearly got a score. They were right outside, knocking on the door of the end zone, and they threw it to Corin Pruitt. As we take a look back here, just in and out of the hands as Wu, founder, cutter, and Pruitt just winds up losing it. Would have been some huge momentum at halftime. Instead, the Pride trail by one. How big could that possession possibly be as we head into the second half here? There's a huge difference going into the second half, knowing you're tied versus knowing that you have a point still to make up in your journey towards a victory. Um, for To have come so close to securing that goal, I think that we're going to see some immediate intensity come out of the pride, especially from Corinne Pruitt herself. Um, you know that she wants that one back. Yeah. She's going to try to go get it too. So we've seen a lot there in that first half. I think one thing that has really stood out to me for the pride is just the handling play of Penelope Wu um, nearly with the assist there on that score at the end of the first half that, that didn't wind up being a score but how critical has she been her experience and her activity as a handler been for the pride today uh, cannot be understated and I think one of the things that it's really allowing the pride to do is attack more with some of their other players Penny uh, has a massive ability to shape the field with her throws especially in a wind kind of regardless of the direction that wind's coming but the threat that she poses is allowing um, a lot of other players in their offensive set to find great success. Um, we, I know we called Rachel Mast's name at the end of that game. That's someone that Domenica Sutherland wanted us to know about um, playing on the O-line. She's been playing for less than three years, if you can believe it. Um, wow. You know, and already uh, a part of that starting O-line for the Pride. Um, we've called Tico, N Tico Lim and Jessica Larson's names a lot as well. They're sitting in that backfield space with Penny. Um they are, you know, tremendously adept at attacking those upfield spaces and really carefully piecing apart that cup from the red. We've seen both of them take shots through the middle um, that immediately unlock the offense for the pride. Um, it's it's not wrong to say that a lot of it starts with Penny. I think we'd just be remiss if we didn't give credit to everyone else that's cracking that puzzle with her. And in the other side for the red, I felt like in that second quarter there, and this really kind of goes for both teams. 
Um, but you know, we, we've seen some teams take some shots downfield. Uh, Foster, one of those players for the Indy Red, who's gotten open a few times. Uh, how how active have these cutters been, and how have you seen the the handlers settle into this game in the on-field conditions? Uh, something funny that Jack Eli told me last week ahead of the strike game was that their throwers and their cutters are not afraid to shoot and take shots in the wind. doesn't matter what kind of wind they're looking at. We're seeing it play out again today. Uh, they're going to throw early. They're going to throw often. They're going to throw big, and they know that they've got the cutters. Like Foster, you're going to go out and secure that disc every single time. Uh, Baumgartner are also very effective on that deep space uh, on the off of the D-line turns for the, you know, whenever the pride relinquishes the disc. Well, we are just about ready for the second half to get going as teams will make their way out onto the field. The Pride trail by one. They desperately need a win. They're 0-2 on the season. And Charlie and I had talked about, you know, they just they need to win just about every game they possibly can for the playoff picture. For the Red, they are 2-0. They're trying to stay undefeated as right now they control their own destiny as that postseason picture continues to take shape. And, we get started off with nope, no, just, uh, just not a pull, a little practice throw. Throw me off guard up here in the booth. And <laughs> Penelope Wu had launched a Frisbee that wound up going out of play and threw me off guard as curveball was dished out there as the Red uh, are still talking things over. Uh, one interesting thing I do want to mention as we get ready to have this uh, poll go up for the second half is that both of these teams are missing a couple players of note. Um, there is college regionals going on in the Great Lakes region, um, and that has affected availability of players for this weekend as some of the young, young talent are taken away for games. That does include um, uh, Riley Dixon, who plays for the Columbus Pride. Um, and then gone for some other reasons is Tracy Lowe or T. Lowe, as they're referred to by the Red, um, also absent today. It's definitely shaping the offenses and defenses for these teams. So it is the Red who pull. Frisbee in the hands of Wu. Let's get circled around. The Pride can tie it here in the opening possession of the first half as the Red come out in that zone once again. The Pride will just continue to be patient as, they, as they've done throughout most of this game. Lim working around a nice snag there from Larson. Immediate adjustment from the Red Cup. We're seeing that um, upfield position currently played by Linnea Frazier be very active in running down uh, those who would go to try to sit in the handler set on that swing side, really taking away just one more look from the Pride. Broken through the cup, Pride finding some room to work with here. Larson. A nice throw goes around a woo through a couple defenders. They make some of those more difficult throws. I mean, just look so casual. The Pride do. And Charlie, you've talked about it. They've, they've made some really impressive throws to work through that red zone as Wu though, turns it over. Yeah, I think that one got away from her just a little bit. A nice OI flick to try to continue with swing, and Anna McClurkin read it the whole way and was able to secure that block. So now can the Red get a break point here? We saw one earlier in the game. It's so pretty back and forth here for the most part as McClurkin upfield. Vanis tries to find a cutter, and Lim was there for the D. And Wu is immediately going to heave it downfield. Turner's open. A nice catch. Through Taps traffic. the disc back into play. Pruitt. Around a limb. Pride of, again. Pride of succeeding their goal. They took uh they took the red out of their zone. And a nice throw from Pruitt works it ahead to Limb. She'll dump it back to Pruitt. Little give and go. Pruitt tried to strike cut. Now Wu tries to get open instead it gets swung around. And a pick is called down on the field. Pruitt taps it back in, or Larson rather. And a nice throw inside the end zone, a one-handed catch for Wu. The Pry are able to tie it at five. First time we've been tied since it was 2-2 two to two back in the first quarter. Yeah, you just see, um, you just see, 
Uh, number 24, Jessica Larson, take her time and read through a couple different looks there, Harrison, before she gets the one that she wants over to number 47, Penny Wu. We've said it before. We'll keep saying it. Patience is going to be key all game as um, intensity continues to ramp up. Knowing that you don't need to hit the first, second, or even the third look, but finding that fourth one that's open and easy, now that's the easiest way to get buckets. So Wu gets the score. She continues to just be all over the field. There was a turnover earlier in that point, and Wu immediately off the turnover, hucked it downfield to Mary Turner, and that is really what opened up the door as a couple dump passes and swing arounds through the handler line eventually finds Wu flashing open in the end zone. The Pride tie it at five, and if they can get their first break point of the game, now would be a great time to do just that. They could take their first lead since it was 2-1 to one back in the first quarter. And an absolute gorgeous pull goes up from Domenica Sutherland, lands at about 20 yards up from the red end zone, and not, uh, not where you want to start if you're the Indy Red, but Domenica just buries him. Milton from the far sideline works it around to Oland. Dudley trying to cut open behind Oland High in the stall count. A nice catch keeps the possession alive. High level grab there from Skittles Morton. That's a really difficult running down grab, and uh, she made it look pretty textbook. Steerwalt dumps it back to Dudley. Just in and out of the hands of Milton. Yeah, active defense defense there from Natalie Barnhart, another Pittsburgh Parcha member. Uh, man, they've got great representation in this game, Harrison. You've mentioned them a couple times. you talked about their club success. you talked about the chemistry that that brings to this team. As the Pride will try to get their first break point. Sutherland with it now. Just routine passing catches. It goes back to Sutherland. A nice little reset on the stall count. I think this is a... Uh pretty high level move from the Indy Red um, being able to run that zone with their offensive line and their defensive line because we're seeing it really fluster this pride D line as they try to make an offensive uh, as they try to succeed on offense here worth noting that um, you know Penelope Wu is not out there playing on this point but um, they do have a lot of those same players um, able to shape the field with some of their throws on their defensive line uh, it is one of their first looks at this zone, though, Harrison. This is Chelsea Zhu, who dumps it back. It's worked around to Sutherland. It's a player flashing open, but couldn't haul in the catch. Charlotte Corner was there as they tried to get it past that cup and work it upfield, unable to. So off the turn, Red get possession back. As Milton gets open, upfield to a cutter. Red advancing. Sutherland streaked in there trying to force that block. Not able to secure it, though. Just gets worked up ahead back to Milton. Backhand gets it to Dudley. Dudley trying to throw around the mark. She can't break it. Instead, she heaves to the end zone. And a score for the Red. Maya Hernandez flashes open again. Hurt last week. Back in action today. She's got two scores. M Maya Hernandez uh, is fresh off a national championship appearance as we see the uh, high stall punt go up from Dudley over to Maya Hernandez. Uh, last club season, Maya Hernandez went all the way to the national championship game with Ann Arbor hybrid mixed team out of Michigan. Um, they went in pretty significant underdogs to that club season and very firmly made a name for themselves. Maya Hernandez is a huge cog on their team. So you see you know, her ability to just get open. Dudley high in the stall count, able to find her um, with that forehand throw. And yeah, I mean, how how when you talk about getting to the championship in that club stage for Hernandez, you know, exactly what is the significance of that? I mean, how big of a deal is it, you know, to, to make it that far on the club stage. If you just kind of want to speak to the talent a little bit that Hernandez has to be on a club that, that gets to a national championship appearance. Uh, there are a lot of people in the Ultimate community who still consider club to be the highest level that you can succeed at, you know, outside of going to Worlds. And um, 
a lot of our professional leagues are still in their infancy. Club has been around for, you know, 30, 40, 50 years at this point. So that's the one that means the most to a lot of players. And that's where you see a lot of people really invest their time and their energy, um, not to diminish the PUL, the WUL, or the AUDL, but I think club still holds a special place in a lot of hearts. So pretty much all these players, you know, have a, have a club team that they play for. You mentioned club team out of Pittsburgh a few times that some pride players are featured on as they try to get a score back here. Lim, the handler, Wu is back out on the field this possession. She wasn't out there last time for the pride as she caught some rest, and this is her, the Frisbee now. Nice give-and-go exchange with Larson. When I think a player got a hand on that one as it's a turn. I think so. A lot of that came from field direction from Jalen Baumgartner downfield in that deep space. Ah, as we see the turnover from the red. And Makita Matamore tried to work it upfield. Throw was just a little bit too low as it uh, skid, skidded into the turf. Is Wu out on the far sideline. She's looking upfield. We'll wind up dumping it back to Larson. See that active cup out there for the red again. Wu tries to jump in the middle. Now she does successfully. And a great throw and look downfield. All of a sudden, the Pride have some room to work with here. So they get it back into their handler's limb. Marked around a woo. You never want to give up a big shot, Harrison, but remember that anything down to that low side, that close to the camera side, the Red are going to be pretty comfortable with the disc heading that direction. The more that they can force the Pride down there and set up a trap, you know, the more effective their zone gets to be um, as they set back up. We had a pick call to play. Gets going again. Larson has it immediately to Lim near side. And now out of that zone are the red. Some gorgeous handler movement from the pride right here. So Wu, one of those handlers, has it back. Out to Wong. Finds Wu, cuts across. A nice backhand around the mark. They're going to call and that a goal, score. Harrison. They were right there on the end zone, and the Pride able to get one back and tie it at six. Some beautiful toes there. It's the fourth time we've been tied today, as you just see Wu able to reach around, break that mark. And a score for the Pride. Yeah. So Rachel Mast was able to get that one to tie things at six. Just like just like we were told by the Pride ahead of the game, Rachel Mast is one to look out for, and she proves it right there. You know, one to look out for. and I mean, just how difficult is that throw to get off from Wu, to get around a, a mark like that? Because in ultimate, right, when, when you're on the mark, you're the player that's guarding the player with the Frisbee. And you're trying to typically force them to throw in a certain direction you know whether it's far side of the field the near side of the field if you're trying to get them to force you know that backhand throw or the forehand throw I mean Wu is able to reach around that mark get that backhand off I mean just how difficult is it to do that as a handler it's tremendously difficult um, and also something that the highest level players need to have in their toolkit being able to break that mark because that opens up the full field to you um being able to step around that mark and deliver that throw while also making sure that uh, she accounts for the wind that she'd be throwing up into. High level throw from Penelope Wu there. So here's Dudley. She's trying to throw around the mark and this Frisbee's gonna circle all the way back down to the far side. A quick turnover here from the red. Pride will try to get a break point. I think the Pride are starting to really get some momentum in this game, Harrison. It's starting to show a lot more things are going their way. It feels like they're Starting to hit a groove a little bit with 3.30 left here in the third quarter. Working up field. Knocking on the door, but a turnover. Kelly Kirker gets up and starts streaking downfield. Picked up, though, by a pride defender. She's going to look to attack that deep space when she gets an opportunity to do. She's got the speed to do it, Harrison. Olin taps it into play. It goes ahead to Rosenthal. Trying to find a handler. She'll swing it around to Dudley. Oland back with it again. Red look much more established in this possession, and I spoke a little uh, bit too soon. As soon as you say that, there's the turnover. The Pride will try to huck it immediately. A Frisbee deflects off. It might have been the back of the head of Bree Harrison. 
as the players try to sort out the call. We have some observers down on the field who can kind of help facilitate things in moments like this. Yeah, it's Janine Walker down there who uh, I, I'm assuming – her frustration is maybe that contact was made, you know, with the frisbee before it left her hand. Yeah, um, we'll see how this call resolves. Um, these players play with a lot of integrity, so we're going to trust that they get it right. Uh, you mentioned the observers in the Premier Ultimate League; they don't utilize uh, active referees. They stay much more like the club system, where they uh, have observers out there. Players still make calls themselves, so it's up to the players to have an intricate knowledge of the um, rulebook. Observers are just there to help things resolve, make sure that play stays at a high uh, and high level of sportsmanship level. So it gets sorted out. The Pride will immediately start working upfield again, but it is a turnover. Bad throw from Walker. Steerwalt gets play going again for the red. Back in the hands of Dudley. Nice catch to keep the possession alive by Rosenthal, who heaves it downfield, but it's too far out of the reach of Kelly Kirker. And a turnover there for the Pride. We saw the wind push that one up and down just a little bit as the player went to secure that. I think it's starting to play a little bit more of a factor as we uh, uh, move our way into the afternoon. Well, back to Dudley. She has no mark. Plenty of time to work with for her. She moves it around to Owen. Dudley's hanging behind for a dump throw if she can get it. And a nice cut there to find some open real estate. Downfield catch and a score for the red. Lizzie Steerwalt. Yeah, Duds once again, as you're going to see in replay here in a second, her footwork cannot be understated. Watch her hit that stutter step and then just continue in the direction she was going. Tricks her defender, sends her back the other direction, and puts up an easy throw to Steerwalt. Yeah, just loses the defender. We've mentioned her footwork a couple times so far on the broadcast. Pretty big there is the red go back in front by one with 103 left to play here in the third quarter. This is the first of two games that both these teams are playing in. The third team here today is New York. They'll be playing against the Pride next. And later this evening, 6 o'clock, the Indy Red will get their second game going of the day against New York. Red trying to stay undefeated on the year. They are 2-0 and with wins against Nashville and Minnesota. Pride are 0-2. They've lost to Milwaukee and Minnesota trying to find their first win on the year as the games become all the more important as the season carries on. Red with the pull. And the Pride will try to answer once again. And that may be the longest pull we've seen today, Harrison. That's completed just five yards uh, off the end zone line. What a rip from Anna McClurkin. It's worked around to Larson. As Wu cuts open, tries the backhand heave downfield. Frisbee's not going to have enough air underneath it and the red will get the D Frazier read that the whole way Harrison secured it nice and easy with two hands 30 seconds left see what the red are going to look at Wyckoff tries to float it down that sideline but it wasn't able to be hauled in by Julia Hill so the turnover down to 15 seconds here as the pride will close out this possession and this is the last quarter that we're going to have in this game where this uh, end-of-quarter possession rule applies. Uh, we do have a stoppage, though, as it looks like there's a timeout call. Columbus is going to try to set up an offense. Remember, the third quarter, the Pride will get to play out the rest of the quarter, and if they're maintaining possession, get to play through the rest of their possession. The Red are going to have about 12 seconds to try to force a turnover. Um, next quarter, though, we look more traditional buzzer beater. If, as the clock is expiring, you better take that look and shoot it. We'll see if that becomes a factor as this game has stayed close throughout. Largest lead has been by two goals. Red lead by one right now. Ben Murphy, head coach for the Pride. He wants to talk things over. We've seen this a couple times in timeouts where you know, we saw the Red get out of their zone. A timeout was called by the Pride, and then they hopped back in it. If you are the Indy Red, obviously you want to manufacture a stop here. You don't want to give the Pride any momentum heading into the final quarter with a score to close out the third. So what defense do you go with here if you're the Red? It seems like they've gone with zone most of the game, or do they try to maybe catch the Pride off guard and, and go with something else? They do have time to set a defense that responds to the offense. Um, I think that we'll probably see them come out in a variant of their zone look, something that's going to challenge those first couple throws, see if they can't um, 
try to offer the pride a look that's really tantalizing, but then capitalize with an athletic block, you know, maybe further downfield. One of the other important timeout rules to remember is that in the PUL, they can make substitutions on the line. So the pride are welcome to kind of stack an offensive line, so to speak, if Murphy feels that's the right call to make. Um, but the red are free to do so as well if they feel like they want to really stack the odds in their favor of getting a stuff here. They could put out, and don't be surprised if we see a highly stacked D-line. Well, Penelope Wu will tap in the discs to start play, it would appear. Out of the timeout, she will. You see her on the far side of the field. Mm -hmm. Clock is at 15 seconds as play gets going again. Swung around to Larson. Pride were very patient in that first half to get their scores. We'll see if patience can prevail here again for the away team. Mast needs to find somebody. He's getting high in the stall count. Mm -hmm. Wu is there to bail her out. All right. It's all possession the rest of the way out in this quarter, Harrison. We've got a stoppage here, discussion on the field. And, I mean, Mast was, was pretty high in that stall count. You've got 10 seconds. I wonder if the conversation might have to do with a stall. Or you see Wu talking with her mark as well as Play tries to get sorted out here. Red lead by a goal. And immediately back in, Wu with a great break throw. Larson out of the far side gets knocked down. No contest on that foul call. <laughs> I don't think she was going to try. Good sportsmanship put on here. Self-officiated game and another great cut from Wu. She's going to huck it downfield. And the pride get the score at the end of the third quarter. Corin Pruitt. A great delivery from Wu. Pruitt cashes in, and we are tied for the fourth or fifth time today going in to the fourth quarter. Yeah, you watched Penny Wu do her uh, best Kristen Dudley impression there, have some hot footwork to get herself open up field, gets the swing pass, and then immediately launches to Pruitt. We knew that Champ was going to reel that one in because she wanted it back from the first half, Harrison, and she earned it. She really did. I mean, we talked about that. That was one of the first things we started with as soon as we got back for the second half was we played a replay of Pruitt's drop at the end of the second quarter, and she wasn't going to drop that one, and, and that was a, a great delivery from Wu as well. And I mean, just a great breakdown of what the pride threw out defensively. And, and Wu, I mean, immediately, I mean, she, she had some great throws coming out of that possession there. And I mean, she is clearly a huge part of this offense for the pride. We're going to take some time here at the end of the third quarter and thank some of our non-sponsor partners, uh, the Girl Scouts of America, the Central Indiana, the ACLU of Indiana, the Premier Ultimate League, uh, Universe Point Productions, as Harrison and I are here uh, representing for them, and the Indiana Ultimate Foundation. Um, Indiana Ultimate Foundation is putting on a hat tournament next weekend on May 7th. Uh, go check out their website for some details on that. Uh, I also want to take some time to shout out another organization in Frisbee doing great, great things. A disc Diversity, uh, the brainchild and um, passion project of Shani Crawford, a well-known black woman in the Ultimate community. Disc Diversity is dedicated to um, promoting, creating, and supporting opportunities for black and BIPOC athletes in the Ultimate community. Uh, they're in the middle of what they call the Continent Tour Harrison the Continent Tour is several stops across the United States and uh, ultimate hotbeds where they have a traveling core of players, but they put out interest forms for uh, black players who are near to there or said, heck, I can get myself there. You know what? That's fine. And they put on uh, showcase games showing black ultimate players succeeding at the highest level. You know, I had the pleasure of commentating their DC stop on March 26th. You can catch their game tonight in Houston as we pull... As we pull up the rosters for the Continent Tour, some big names on those. Uh, you see Colton Green from Dallas, Texas, helped founded the Flash Flood. We see Alex Davis uh, wearing 18 this time, but known as the fastest man in Ultimate. Uh, we've got uh, Shani Crawford actually deciding to suit up herself today for the other team. Um, that's going to be a tremendous celebration of Black Joy, Black Excellence, and Black Frisbee. Catch that at... 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, it is going to run concurrent with our last game of the day. 
Uh, if you've got two screens at home, maybe you do us a favor yeah, and put up both games. A classic double screen, get them both going and, and, and watch some, some great ultimate and, and some great work that that organization uh, is doing in the world of Frisbee as we get ready for the fourth quarter of play. Pride and Red knotted up at seven. Fifth time today that the game has been tied. Corin Pruitt, the most recent scorer for Columbus at the end of the third quarter. Twice today we have seen scores at the end of quarters for both of these teams. Uh, the Red getting one at the end of the first. Pride get one at the end of the third. But uh, as you mentioned, late in that third quarter, Charlie, now it's buzzer beater fashion here in the fourth as you know we get down to the final quarter of this one as these possessions become all the more important. This game's never been separated by more than two goals. In this case, tied up at the beginning of the fourth quarter. I think that my key here is going to be whichever team's offense can play the cleanest game. We're going to see defenses continue to try to enforce their will. Whoever's offense can uh, navigate that storm successfully, um, complete passes at a high completion rate, is going to have the success I think they need. <clears throat> All the Red need to do is hold out. That is a great pull to get things started for the Pride here in the fourth quarter, looking for their first win on the year. What can the Red do with it as Dudley has it now? And we are seeing the Red slowly but surely navigate, but a call is going. Looks like it may go back. Rosenthal thought she caught it. Quick discussion. She does have it, immediately dumps it back to Dudley. Rosenthal with it again. Further upfield, Red finding some room to work with. Hernandez now trying to find a cutter. Dudley gets open. Deep look. And nearly a score for Rosenthal, but she comes up empty. Almost pulled it in with the left hand. This game stays tied at seven here early in the fourth. Uh, some good pressure that sat on right at the end there from the Pride. I wonder if that got Rosenthal thinking for just an extra second about that grab. That would have been the second score today from our Parcha teammates Rosenthal and Dudley for the Red. So Wu gets play going again. She's been one of the key players of this Pride unit as Sutherland has it now. Red are doing an excellent job of keeping that zone in the way of the throwers as they move upfield. Players very content knowing the system, setting on the two players, one on the mark, one in the lane to take that away. But a rip goes up from Penny Wu anyway to Charlotte Corner. Corner has it. Nobody was there defending. She's got to wait, though, for the rest of the field to catch up. Pruitt. The most recent scorer for the Pride. Can they get a break point and take a lead? And they'll turn it over. Looked like she tried to find Wu on a swing. And great heads up defense from Rosenthal to run that out and make sure that the other Pride offenders weren't able to go try to secure a last second score. Steerwalt gets it back into play, give it back to Dudley. Big look from Oland cross field, but Wu snags it right out of the air. Good awareness from Wu, and downfield, the layout grab, and the Pride have a lead. Undoubtedly, that is the best grab that we have seen today, Harrison. Way through pressure, low to the ground. Uh, we're going to see her. Uh, Penny rips the disc out of the sky, immediately shoots low, knowing that she has to secure that grab around the uh, sideline as well, including the pressure. Uh able to bring that disc in for the goal. So it's Jessica Larson with the score. Look at the layout. Secures the catch. And, I mean, as far as highlight real plays, that's one of the better ones you're going to see in ultimate woo. With the stop on defense, the awareness to find Larson upfield immediately turns, throws a, a perfect pass. I mean, that's just in a spot where the only player who can catch it there is, is Larson. I wonder if we can get another play on the Sports Center top 10 today, Harrison, with that <laughs> be, one. I'd love it. I'd love it. I mean, anything to grow the sport is we've got 9.30 left in the fourth quarter, 8-7 to seven pride lead for the first time since it was 2-1 to one, all the way back in the first. See if the Red can respond. Pride need a win, 0-2 so far. Remembering that was a break for the Pride. 
And that's huge. The red need to hold here just to right the ship. Ooh, doesn't take the look up field to Hernandez. Steer won't with it. Finds her handler on the line at Olin, who gives it back to Steerwalt. This handler line getting some extra work for the red. Milton. Working up field. The red are finding some real estate to work with here as Hernandez has it now. And Hernandez throws it into the turf. It'll be a turnover. Tried to find Milton. Yeah, I think that one stuck up on her hand just a second longer than she wanted it to. Uh, went down into the turf. Sutherland with a deep throw. Crook is open, and the pride back-to-back -back break points. Off the turn, Crook immediately cut up field, and Sutherland with a beautiful throw. So you just take a look at the forehand. And just a great path on that disc and read very well by Crook. Domenica keyed that one up. As soon as she secured that disc, uh, she was loading that huck up to deliver it to Crook in a picture-perfect pass. Crook had time to slow down, read it all the way into her hands for the easy goal. That's a couple times now as we've got a timeout called by Indy Red. Charlie, that's a couple times now we've seen players get open downfield for the pride. What do you think's happened there? Is, uh, is, you know, it's, it's been a turnover and they send a cutter deep. You know, what's the breakdown there defensively? How can the red cover that up? I think it's the success that they've had in cracking that red zone. The more success that you start to have against that zone, uh, the defenses get frustrated, coaches start to make adjustments, and often you see an adjustment back to person. That's let the pride capitalize. As we've talked about several times, they have a very young, hungry, and athletic cutting core, and they've got the throwers in Wu, in Sutherland, in Lim to uh, deliver the disc to those spots. Um, and we're seeing it finally. Their patience, you know, navigating the zone, figuring it out, has reward, you know, been rewarded by person defense coming from the red, and those shots are just open now. They're there. They've got the cutters to get into that open space. So you've seen a couple hucks here this quarter players have have gotten more comfortable as this game has gone on we've we've kind of tracked it throughout just you know we didn't know how the crosswind was going to play a factor obviously last week um, if you were able to catch the broadcast uh, huge wind gusts really affected how the game was played I believe there was only one upwind point in, in that game last week for the red um, in a 14 to 13 win against Minnesota but Handlers are starting to air it out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I think they're feeling confident. You talked about it earlier. You know, handlers finding their rhythm and having taken that time to adjust to the wind, they're feeling much more comfortable now, and they're starting to take those big shots. Uh, worth pointing out here, Kristen Dudley not on the field for the red. I wonder if they're going to save her for a potential D point on the other side. This is McClurkin with it now. With Dudley not out on the field, what can this handler line do for the red? This actually looks like the red's uh, starting D-line or a pretty close version of it. And a sky put on for the score for Anastasia Foster. And what a way to get some momentum back for the home team. They're back down by one. Uh, she puts her defender on an absolute poster. She's going to have that up in her room for a couple months. I got to thank Harrison. Yeah, Foster... Picture perfect in the left-handed grab. So 7.58 left in the fourth quarter. A big score there for the Red. Their first score here in the fourth. And Foster with another highlight reel play. Highlights starting to break loose a little bit here in the second half. I think the strategy... Uh, paid off for the red coaches there. They threw a D line on. They got pretty fortunate in a pull that did not travel that far up the field, and were able to capitalize on the, um, you know, capitalize on their athleticism. You know, culminating in that sky from Foster. Uh, now we're seeing a lot of those same players: McClurkin, Frazier, Wyckoff, back on the field for another D point. Um, it's not a strategy I think's adopted enough. Is the the D line O point as they call it, Harrison and. Um, Pays off big for the red. Let's see if they can get a break and tie this game back up. 
So the pole floats just across midfield. Zone again for the red. Pride have been very patient with it today as Wu has the Frisbee now. Throws over the cup ahead to Pruitt. Pruitt quickly moving it. Yeah, two offenders downfield for the Pride really trying to stretch uh, Corey Auger and Anna McClurkin out. They know that Wu, Larson, and Tico can all air it down there. Um, so you see the red drop an extra defender back there to make sure those throws don't go up. Wu active again. Pride working quickly. So travel is called down on the field. Players will sort this out. We'll see what the results are. With seven minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Other than a pick, I don't think there's a call that players hate more than a travel. <laughs> you know, Charlie, you've played plenty. And, and and you've been down and you've built a relationship with these players. And, you know, calls, whether it's self-officiated or not, can always be a little bit frustrating. But we could play back going again as Will receives the pass from Limp. Uh, these teams all have team ambassadors, people that uh, were chosen by the team to represent. They often are ones that are brought on after the points to make sure that spirits are uh, uh, staying under control, that no one's got any hard feelings. Um, you know, those calls get chippy, and it's good to make sure that, uh, you know, everyone's best interests are held, held at heart, Harrison. The turnover here is the Red trying to move it upfield to Banis. Wu will swing immediately. Pride, they've got plenty of room to work with. You see that cup trying to catch up with the Frisbee. Mast on the far side. Turner, who got open, is trying to find a handler to get it to. Wu cuts behind. Yeah, they were able to really stuff that lane and take that uh, Tiffany Lim option away. A nice throw, nearly a score, but Mast has to walk it back out. Push a little bit further away from the end zone to Larson. Finds Wu, who cuts free. Did she get in for the goal? Yes, she did. Uh, line observer uh, calls that one in. Penny able to get that jump up, secure the disc, and land in the end zone. Did you see Wu, the ability to catch and jump to make sure she gets in for that score. It's a little bit close there, but they count it. And They're back up by two with the pride. The red defender there, I think, thought that her positioning was uh, such, you know, was good enough to uh, stop and take that extra second look that Penny may drop back into that space. Wu capitalizes on the head turn, uh, attacks that up line spot, and gets that easy goal. Yeah, we talked about Dudley's footwork. I think Wu as well has had some good recognition on, you know, making the right cuts to get open as a handler. And, you know, if you notice, you know, the, the strategy, right, your, your handler position, those are the players. You know, all these players can, can make plenty of throws. But, I mean, you, with a handler, it kind of comes with the name a little bit. You know, where they're the ones who are going to kind of command a quarterback the offense a little bit, um, and, and the cutters are the ones getting open, working it upfield. And, and they've done a nice job that when they need a bailout, you know, Wu has been there for that pride offense today, and she's made some clutch throws as well as here she is on the pole. Yeah, and we're seeing a pretty stiff D-line out there for the Pride. Wu, Sutherland, Corner, Pruitt all on the field right now. Really looking to clamp down and kind of make this game theirs. But uh, Red of Counter Duds is back on the field, but a massive layout from the Pride to immediately frustrate the Red. Yeah, because Nikki knocked the disc to the turf with five minutes left. Pride could already really capitalize with another score here and go up by three. Red are in need of a couple goals. Worked up field. Wu is still out there logging some extra minutes. In this red O line, uh, playing in a person defense, maybe not the personnel that they want out there to force uh, to throw the zone back on. Um, certainly, all of their O line, though, tremendously high level players, um, all very, very capable of forcing a turn if the Pride don't play a clean game here. Sutherland has it now. Harrison on the mark. Worked around a woo. And we had or have a timeout called on the field. Back before Sutherland threw it.
Second and final timeout called by the Pride, who lead by two. 426 left to play in the fourth quarter. Charlie, a goal here for the Pride. I mean, exactly how good, uh, how, how big and massive would that be to go up by three here in the fourth quarter? It can be really easy to carry scores into, um, you know, sequential breaks. Up by two, if the, you know, the Pride, you know, give the Red the disc back and the Red are able to score, one more break with four and a half minutes left is super, super reasonable. But if the Pride are able to punch this in to go up three, it's really hard to, you know, hold, as we've seen in this game alone, as some of these points have been long, to then chain together two breaks in a game where the Pride really just have to play possession offense the rest of the way out. The Pride could not look at the end zone. If they were to score here, they could not really look at the end zone the rest of the game and just play possession frisbee. It's not great for the fans, though. Hoping that the teams <laughs> continue to take some shots. Yeah, I, scoring is fun, uh, as as they say. So leading by two, we'll see if the Pride just want to try and stall here or you know, if they could really take further command of this game going up by three late in the fourth quarter. Out of the timeout, Sutherland has it. Pride have no more timeouts left to work with. Mm -hmm. Sutherland immediately throws it. Wu gets open and in for the score. So just like that, two throws out of the timeout, and the Pride go up by three. It's the largest lead we've seen from either team today. Uh, we see Sutherland move the disc up to the field to corner. Corner waits for Wu to just run around her defender. Massive kick spike, perfectly executed. Um, you got to execute the celebration. You have to. The execution to. has to be perfectly executed. I think it's pretty funny, though, when you see somebody mess up the spike, especially <laughs> when there's a really big windup involved. We've seen a couple of those um, uh, happen across the PUL this season. Big windup for a kick spike, only to have thrown it just a little too far out. I mean, how, how much do you think they practice on the celebrations? Uh, I know some of these players. It's a lot more than you might think or that they <laughs> might be proud to admit. Well, 11 8, another score for the Pride. A pretty big one from Wu. She's got multiple scores today. She's got four out of five of the last scores. Uh, assisted on two and scored on two. So she has had a hand in four of the last five scores for the Pride. As Wu has taken control of this game with 419 left to play in the fourth quarter. The Red are not out of it. They need to score here, get a couple of break points to tie this thing up at 11. Blading pull from Sutherland, picks up the rolling yardage as the first player misses it, but it's secured by Steerwalt. So how do the red respond? Dropped around up ahead to Milton. Dudley coming really shallow through that upline space to get the swing. Worked around. Milton has it again. Throw a little bit behind the receiver there. Has to make an athletic play to keep possession alive for the red. It was a nice catch from Schloniger as it gets moved up even further. Hernandez got two scores today and just out of the reach of Dudley. A little bit too outside and probably came in a little bit hotter than Duds was expecting, not able to reel that disc in. So the Pride can be patient. Under three and a half left to play in the fourth quarter now. A comfortable lead. But a quick turnover and a nice sky put on there from Rosenthal. Steerwalt has it now. Ahead to Milton. You watched Rosenthal tee that one up as soon as it left the thrower's hands. She was in place and ready to secure that disc. Retake possession for the red. Milton worked ahead to Steerwalt. Around to Dudley. Under three minutes left in the fourth quarter now. It's Dudley circles around to Milton. And just out of the right hand of Rosenthal. Would have been a huge score for the Red. Instead, they stay down by three. 240 left in the fourth quarter. Sutherland taking her time to tap it back in play as that clock continues to wind down. Pride trying to get their first win on the season. Zone still being deployed by the Red as Sutherland has it now. Tries to work it around. Good defense, though, put on by the Red. Oland with the D. 
Yeah, very, very heads up play from Olin. Jumped into that lane without making a dangerous play. Ate that disc up and just took out, possession. Just outside of the end zone as Milton has it now. And nearly a score, but great defense put on by the Pride. AJ Uvi lost the foot race and made it up in the air, able to get a hand on that disc. Looks like we're going to get some conversation about it, though. Olin wants a foul call. Take a look back at the replay. Uthi, nice layout defense. We might have had a foul called by Sydney Oland. It looked like she was motioning to her hand that maybe it was hit along with the Frisbee. So Red still have possession. Dudley with a nice grab. Tries to pass out to the far side, and the Pride get the stop again. Barnhart was there for the D. I understand the shot from Rosen, uh, from Duds there to Rosenfall. I don't think the execution was what she wanted, though, as that bladed straight down into a Pride defender. Pride can taste the win now. 90 seconds left to play here in the fourth, except they stepped out of play. So Red will get it back and a lengthy point, but a quick turnover from Dudley Sutherland read that very well, and she'll try to huck down field. Looking to Milo Eater, and they reel that one easy, but they don't have a receiver to continue to. No rush, though, for the pride as Sutherland rushes back up from behind and gets the dump. Under a minute left to play now in the fourth quarter. Uthi. Good defense from Hernandez there to make sure that the third of Sutherland did not go up for an easy goal. Pride trying to go up by four. Also content to take their time. Barnhart has it now. In the late seconds here of the fourth quarter, 30 seconds to play. Sutherland lays out for one. Couldn't quite haul it in. Chelsea Zhu tried to weave that throw outside in and get the score, but couldn't quite do it. Under 20 seconds left to play. The Pride are on their way to their first win on the season. This will be the first loss on the year for the Red. Steerwalt has it. Pride with still one more game left to play after this. They'll play New York. And New York will stick around and play Red later on for the third game today in the trio of games we have. And our time expires. Red fall 11 to 8. The Columbus Pride get their first win on the year. Charlie, that was uh, a big one. It seemed like the Red were in control for a while, and uh, just in the second half, the Pride came out, got a couple of break points. They took uh, an 8-7 to seven lead, and they didn't look back after that. Yeah, I think that the Pride were able to do the thing that, well, you know, we were told ahead of time that they were going to try to do, which was to play their own game, not let the Red dictate their offense, dictate their defense. Um, it took them a little bit while, perhaps longer than the coaches or players would say that they wanted, but once they settled into that identity taking really creative throws and looks, playing high pressure uh, you know, on person defense and not being afraid to shoot to the end zone, you know, on the strength of their deep throwers, it was all pride the rest of the way. Red weren't, you know, kind of came out, got hit in the mouth and weren't able to recover after that. And uh, Penelope Wu with a massive game today for the pride. Uh, you, uh, we had mentioned earlier that, you know, she had a hand, two assists and two goals. Uh, she had a hand in four of the five final scores for the Pride as they really took over in that second half. And she may have even had a hand in overall eight of the scores. Um, sorry, seven or seven of the scores on the day. A massive statistical day. But uh, Penny, I would have to assume, maybe Hope is uh, only going to care about the one that now appears in the W column for the Pride. And it is a big one. You mentioned earlier, postseason picture. Pride pretty much need to win uh, every game on their remaining schedule. For the Red, they we're going to try to go 3-0 and to start the year. Doesn't quite happen for them. But, uh, you know, with those first two wins to start the year, they still have uh, some opportunities to pick up some more and, and, you know, really try and make that run into the postseason. But we've still got more games for you uh, today on Universe Point Productions as – uh, the Columbus Pride, they'll stick around. They'll play a game. They'll be back out here at 3 against New York. And uh, also later today, the Red will uh, take on New York at 6 o'clock. Again, that'll be right here in Universe Point Productions. Is, uh, one more time, we 
Want to thank Parker Mortgage Team. That rant you found on the internet is no better than a dead disc. It's really only part of your mortgage equation. You need a go-to mortgage advisor to walk you through the process and paint the whole picture. Check out the Parker Mortgage Team in downtown Noblesville, or basically your Vincent Van Go to. Uh, also, want to thank Zen Lab. Zen Lab is an online yoga studio. It's trying to reduce socioeconomic and physical barriers to yoga. Your teacher is Kristen, who offers a free class every month, along with membership perks, discounts, on-demand yoga classes. You can also work with Kristen one-on-one -on -one with virtual or in-person private yoga sessions. Go to zenlabindy.com to learn more. I want to thank Somerset Paving from Ann Arbor, Michigan. <clears throat> Somerset Paving is Detroit's expert in asphalt and concrete paving. Somerset Paving, take the right way to quality. Thank you to Materials Data Management, one of our local sponsors. They have the experience and drive necessary to help your organization deploy the best in engineering materials, information management solutions. Check us out on LinkedIn for current job openings and our website, materialsdatamanagement.com for a list of all our services and software. Data importers, exporters, and consulting too. MDMI is here for you. Thank you to VC uh, from Montreal, Canada. They provided the uniforms that our teams played in today. Thank you as well to Discraft and to Layout. And finally, thank you to Everyone's Joy Photography. Everyone's Joy Photography, photographer for UND Sports and for the Indianapolis Red. It does not matter if you need sports or fashion, we've got you covered at any event. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, or online at everyonesjoyphotography.com. Harrison, if that's the game that we have to kick us off today, I could not be more excited for the other two that we're going to get to watch today uh, between the Pride and the New York Gridlock, and then again between the Indianapolis Red and the New York Gridlock later tonight. Um, and it's been an absolute joy getting to work with you today. Yeah, plenty more great Frisbee on the way uh, later today. Great ultimate on the way later today. The Pride take the win in this one over the red 11-8 to eight for Charlie Rowe. I'm Harrison Silcox. Thank you for joining us on our first of three broadcasts today.